Hello! In this video, I'm hoping to give a lesson on graphic storytelling, as I call it, essentially storytelling in comic book form, in a cinematic form. This is not a drawing lesson, which is to say it's not about how to draw. I've uh, taught this class uh, in various forms in various places. I even have a little uh, book that I've created based on my curriculum. And it's not a drawing class in as much as that it's not about can you draw realistically versus cartoony or something else? I've had plenty of students come up to me and say, I can't draw well. I can't draw good. I think what they're really trying to say is what I draw doesn't look like real life. It doesn't look like a realistic drawing. Well, the good news is in comic books, it doesn't have to be. It's more about telling the story in that medium. It's more about conveying the idea with the pictures on your page than about does it look like real life. When you stop and think about it, the Hulk, as an example, doesn't look realistic. If, if, if you had come from another planet and had never seen humans, and someone showed you a, a Hulk comic book, you would look at that and go, no, that's not a person, that's not a human being, I'm pretty sure that's not what they look like. It's an exaggeration of the idea of a human being, a very muscular human being. And so are most, a lot of uh, comic book styles are based on that. We'll get into that more later in a future video, hopefully. So anyways, getting back to this. This is about storytelling and conveying the idea with your drawings, with your pictures. Um, in comic books, pictures without words are still comic books. It might be a silent film type version of a comic book that you could understand, looking at what's happening and so on and so forth. Words without pictures are not a comic book. That's that's literature, that's prose, that's still just writing. So you don't necessarily have to have words, although many do, obviously. Um, and the good part about comic books is that you can do, not only do you have to not draw realistically, but you can do a comic book about anything, any subject matter, any style, any ideas. It could be autobiographical, it could be biographical, science fiction, history, westerns, sports, mystery, horror, romance, gross, um, really anything. In this part of the world where I am, in, in America, most comic books traditionally, it's changing quite a bit now, but most comic books traditionally were for a long time about superheroes. Does that mean that you have to do a book about superheroes? Not at all. You can do a story about whatever you want to do about. That's the good part, do it about. That's the good part of comic books is that you have so much freedom. I think that's really what's so appealing about doing comic books is that it allows you to do whatever you like and it doesn't really require special equipment. You don't need to join a club or wear a certain uniform or have this or have that. By and large, the bare bones basics of telling a story in comic book form means paper and pencil. If you're more sophisticated, you can have other utensils. You could even use graphic uh, computers to do it. But getting down to it, paper and pencil, which I think for the most part is probably something that you would find in every household in this part of the world very easily, is all you need. So that's relatively the good news. The thing about any subject matter is, again, as long as you like the idea and you want to tell that story, you can do it. It doesn't have to be what everybody else is doing or what seems to be popular and so on and so forth. Um, good story... And good art trumps everything. People say, oh, what kind of movies do you like? What kind of books do you like? I like good movies. I like good books, regardless of the subject matter. If it can hold my interest, I can walk away saying, boy, I really enjoyed that. So good story and good art trumps all ideas over fads, over what is popular or what you think is popular at the moment. Um, in telling the story, that freedom of being able to do anything, anywhere, that's good. There are two restrictions in my observation over the years in, in doing comic books. Two rules that should not be broken. You cannot bore the reader, nor can you confuse the reader. Other than that, you can do anything that you want. You can go, go wild with your stories as long as you don't do either of those two things. If you've ever had a book that was boring, did you want to finish it? No. If you ever reading a book that was confusing, did you want to finish it? No. So you just want to throw it out the window. But as long as you don't break those two rules, you're okay. You can, you can be as creative and exaggerated and as wild as you want to. Talking about that, let's go back, let's go to basics in comic book storytelling. In my opinion, the very basic is the elements of telling the story. That would be the page, panels, and then the gutter. So the page
page is just what you think it is. It really is the page. You turn the page, you look at the, the thing, story going on. So the page is where you're going to put your panels. I try to discourage students or other people from using the term boxes. They say, oh, you put boxes on the page and draw on them. Boxes can be kind of um, limiting in its definition because we tend to think of a box as a square, although I guess technically a box is a cube, but to people tend to think of it as a square or rectangle and it kind of limits what they can choose from. Theoretically, panels can be any size, any shape, even the entire page, a splash page. So try not to think in terms of the word box so much as panels, and then you can have kidney-shaped panels, star-shaped panels, irregular panels, square panels. Whatever works for the story at that moment is fine. So from page, you go to panels, and then you have the gutter, and the gutter is the separation, the space between panels, and you want to include that by and large as opposed to having them just have a line drawn between them. You actually want to include that space. So the term gutter is the space between them. When you're walking down the sidewalk and you look, the space between the street and the sidewalk is called the gutter. If you go bowling, the space between your lane and the lane of the person next to you is called the gutter. So the gutter really is the separation between those two areas. That's what we're thinking about. Now there's a reason for that, and I'm going to be dropping in some, some images, uh, editing in some images to help emphasize this idea. But the reason why you don't want to have just panels butted up against each other with perhaps just a thin line, a drawn line, to uh, separate them is because it can be confusing. You've broken one of those rules. If I have panel here with Mr. Happy and I draw the figure and I decide to put some fancy shading, make it kind of dark on this side of the panel. And then I have the next panel and there's Mr. Sad. But over here in this part of the panel, I'm gonna put some fancy shading to make it all dark. Well, when those two panels are together, it looks like one long panel. with some dark shadowing in between the two characters. And you go, wait a minute, this character shouldn't be with that character, they should be separate, I'm confused. Why are they together? So you've broken one of those rules. If you have this panel, a gutter, then this panel showing the other character, even with fancy shading or some element, people will go, oh, I get it, he's over there, and that other person is over there. They're separate, I get it, I'm not confused. So gutters can be a, a necessary part of it. Try to think of, of putting in that little bit of little bit of extra effort to include the gutter. You want to, at least in this part of the world, people tend to read from left to right and top to bottom. You want to kind of, even though it sounds very obvious, we have to remind ourselves sometimes. Remind yourself of that because as the person turns the page in this part of the world, they're going to look to the top left, go across to the right, drop down, and so on and so forth. So if you can actually compose your panels so the person will know well, this is first, this is second, this is third, you'll avoid confusion. Within each panel, as you compose the drawings that go within the panels, you want to keep that same idea. What do I want the reader to see first and second and third? If, especially it's important when you have a dialogue scene, when someone's talking. If you put the person who's asking the question on the right-hand side and the person answering on the left, you're going to have someone read the answer before they read the question. Um, this will be this short video. Uh, this is kind of the first of a series. See how this works. And I will be dropping in some images. We'll be talking in the next video, presumably, hopefully, about uh, camera shots and what that means and how to use them and the significance of them. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to contact me or message me, or if you have specific things that you wanted to see, I would be glad to try to talk about that. Hope everybody's staying safe, and I'll see you soon.